Okay, now I'm going to sit over like this. <laughs> the Portage and Prairie School Division acknowledges that schools in our division are located on Treaty 1 land as well as the traditional territory of the Ojibwe, Dakota, Cree, and Anishinaabe peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. This is the Portage and Prairie School Division regular board meeting of April 12, 2022. Attending board members Penny Burway, Debbie Satulski, Helen Hogarth, Tracy Asham, Yvette Cuthbert, Shona Lee Leslie, Louie Luna, Murray McClanahan, and I'm Rod Brown, the chair of the board. As senior admin staff, Jonathan Hyman, Rochelle Rams, Pam Garnham, and Todd Cuddington. Now that we've got that all out of the way, thank you for your time tonight. The school division is looking at an event that happens rarely and that is the closure of the entire division. Tomorrow and Thursday, because of the weather forecast, the decision has been made to close the schools. This was, of course, done for the protection of our students and staff. The March break did not do the school system any favorites with regard to COVID. We have experienced a large number of staff and, uh, to a lesser degree, students who have contracted COVID after the break. This has put an additional strain on our staff. Thank you to those who have been able to help out, and we hope that those who got sick, we hope you have a speedy recover, recovery. Just a reminder that school board elections are in October, and if you are interested in running, you are more than welcome to reach out to any current board members for information, or you can contact the school division office. Pam, would you take this in, please? Yep. 4322, that the agenda for the meeting of April 12, 2022 be approved. Moved by Penny, seconded by Helen. All in favor? Carried. 4422, that the minutes of the regular meeting of March 22, 2022 be approved. Moved by Murray, seconded by Louie. All in favor? Carried. 4522 that the minutes of the operation committee meeting of March 24th, 2022 be approved. Moved by Louie, seconded by Murray. All in favor? Carried. 4622 that the following teachers be employed on a teacher general contract, and this would be effective September 2022, September 6, 2022. Adam Martini, 100%, Serene McConnell, 100%. Hundred percent and Jillian Petal, one hundred percent. Moved by Helen, seconded by Penny. Any questions? Rules. Uh, Arthur Meehan, Crescent View, and Lavrandre. All in favor? Carried. Four seven twenty two. That the following teacher be employed on a twenty two twenty three limited term teacher contract. Alexander Smith, one hundred percent. September six two thousand twenty two to June thirtieth two thousand twenty three. Moved by Debbie, seconded by Tracy. Questions? School? Uh, school psychologist. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Carried. 4822, that the following teachers be employed on a 2021-2022 limited term teacher contract. Heather Bruce, 50%, April 4th, 2022 to May 30th, 2022. And Serene McConnell, 100%. June 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2022. Moved by Vat, seconded by Shauna Lee. All in favor? Carried. Schools, on there? No, in that. Okay. <laughs> Chris and View. <laughs> 4922, that Jessica Painter teacher requests for a 37.5% reduction in FTE on the March 18th, 2022 motion be changed to 25% reduction in her teacher general contract effective September 6, 2022 to June 30, 2023 be approved. Moved by Helen, seconded by Tracy. All in favor? Carried. 41022 that the board approve the reallocation of $250,000 from the Division Admin Office Capital Reserves and transfer to the Power distribu Distribution System upgrade. Moved by Debbie, seconded by Louie. All in favor? Carried. 41122 that the board approve of the reallocation of $250,000 from the Division Admin Office Capital Reserve to transfer to the Division Accessibility Project. Moved by Murray, seconded by Penny. All in favor? 
Carried. 412-22 that the board approve the reallocation of $300,000 from the Division Admin Office Capital Reserve to transfer to the video surveillance system upgrade. Moved by Yvette, seconded by Sean Lee. All in favor? Carried. 413-22 that Tammy Marshanko teacher requests for unpaid leave effective June 13th, 2022 to June 30th, 2022 be approved. Moved by Louis, seconded by Yvette. All in favor? Carried. So, okay, Pam. So my item is just to remind parents about student-led conferences on April 21st and April 22nd. Um, I believe by now all of the schools would have sent uh, requests home to parents on times and dates that you uh, would be available for student-led conferences. And parents will have an option if they want to to come in and speak to in person to the, to the teacher and bring their child for student-led conferences. So you'll have the option of virtual or in person. So please contact, if you have not been reached by your school, please contact them and reach out to them because that is next week when we come back. And um, we're looking forward to our gradual return to back to what we hope will be normal for, for our kids in our schools. So that's it. That's it. You don't have any more to talk about. No, that's it for me okay. tonight. I, have a, I brought a presenter tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And Michelle, you're not going to tell us anything? Mm -hmm. no, no, no. You know, some of that news you told us was good. Mm -hmm. Not tonight. It's not tonight, <laughs> right. Okay, Todd? Okay, so um, my first item is just regarding uh, the elections that will be held in October of uh, 2022. And that we know that municipal and um, um, city council elections take place. And at the same time, we'll have our... Um, trustee school board elections as well and so um, we we know that um, there are people who maybe are considering um, you know dipping their toe into the water of elected office and many people um, find that pathway through school board elections and um, we anticipate that there will be uh, vacancies coming on our board and so we want to uh, encourage people who are maybe um, you know, curious about uh, what school trustees do uh, to go to the Manitoba School Board Association link that's on their website and we'll have a link uh, on our uh, Portage La Prairie School Division page as well and uh, people can look there. There's a very comprehensive um, uh, page that, that provides details about their role. It's a very important role in our community and so uh, if you have questions about that you can certainly reach out to the division office we'll provide more details and uh, our elected school trustees will certainly uh, are the first point of contact so if you have questions about the things they do you can reach out to them as well through our school division office and my second item is the kind of regular COVID-19 report and Rod alluded to some of the uh, most recent um, things happening in our schools regarding COVID. So um, like much of the province, we've, we're seeing a rise in, in COVID cases with the, um, the Omicron variant. And um, prior to uh, spring break, we had reported that our average daily attendance for students had been creeping up to above 80%. Well, unfortunately, we've seen that drop off again since uh, returning from from spring break and uh, largely the absences are due to um, illness uh, with students and so we're kind of down to that mid 70 to range uh, for student attendance and uh, of course uh, our staffing uh, has been impacted significantly which has meant that uh, many teachers have been doing double duty uh, because we have um, had limited substitute teachers we've also had to call on our student services um, uh, staff to provide additional support so um, we have seen a, a significant uptick in uh, in COVID cases and we're hoping that uh, you know those level off uh, in the coming weeks but uh, um, we know that uh, we're in for for a stretch here of, of, of positive cases so uh, that's the latest report on on COVID and then lastly, as Rod had mentioned, um, for the first time in, in many, 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 many years, uh, the division will be implementing a full school uh, division-wide closure of all schools. Mm -hmm. Typically, when we do have inclement weather closures, uh, we, um, we're closing Oakville and Hatterian schools. 
uh, but uh, in this case, we're, we're closing the entire division, including our student services and operations and division office. Um, and the reason for it is we're anticipating that we will be losing hydro and we just won't be able to operate our schools without electricity. And we know that highways will be closed and we have a significant number of staff who commute daily to our schools. And then the last piece is, as mentioned, the COVID has taken a real hit on our staffing and the possibility of being without enough of a staff complement to safely um, you know, have our schools operating uh, is another uh, consideration. Uh, so we'd have people away doing due to, to illness and also because they can't get in because of roads and weather conditions. So we made the decision uh, to notify staff and students and parents and our whole community that schools will be closed. Tomorrow, principals will be in buildings uh, to ensure that someone is there in the unfortunate event that someone didn't hear the news. So we will have people there to monitor if a student did show up accidentally to a and the school was closed. And we'll be monitoring our buildings through our operations supervisor of operations who will be monitoring, you know, um, the, the boilers and the heating and everything else. So uh, a plan is in place. We just hope that the storm doesn't cause too many uh, inconveniences or problems for our community. So that's the plan. Any questions of Todd or Pam on any of this? Is there any other business, formal business, come before the board at this point? Okay, I'll draw your attention to the emailed copies that were sent out to you and the fact that uh, okay. there are we're still going? Yeah. Okay, good. The fact that there are five regular board meetings uh, till the end of June. And we do have a presentation, yes, a do. delegation, a present live, a live <laughs> person. <laughs> so, and a virtual. So and every meeting <laughs> we've been focusing on positive happenings that are happening at all of our schools. And Madame Laura Herdesky volunteered to actually come in and talk to everybody today. And we also have Tracy Vanstone in virtually um, on, through the computer. So I'd like to welcome Laura and Tracy and thank them for coming and tell us all the things that about Crescent View School. Before you do that, <laughs> before I let Laura and Tracy continue here, um, I'm not sure how many years ago it was we sat in the staff room at Victoria School and I interviewed both Laura and Tracy for jobs while there were a number uh, yeah there were, a number, <laughs> there were a number of uh, principals at that point that were interviewing and I must say that both Laura and Tracy did an excellent job uh, in those interviews, I hired Laura, and I think Larry Muirhead hired Tracy. So, you know, they both have worked out well for the division. Larry, Sorry. Larry hired me, too. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that going here. <laughs> well, they're presenting. Yes, I know. We're just here all the time. I know. Anyway, I'm sorry, Laura. Did. No, don't say that. sorry. It's no. good. It's, uh, I, do, I think I do recognize most of you. For those that don't know me, I'm Laura Hordesky, and I've been teaching... Forever, but uh, the last 16 years, I've been the French immersion kindergarten teacher at Ecole Crescent View School. Maybe six months before that, I got a little little stint at Prince Charles before the amalgamation. So since 2006, and in those last 16 years, uh, administration and I, or the French immersion teacher, but that's been me most of the time. Um, we like to do a presentation near the end of January, right before registration, uh, just to inform parents or give people information about fr the French Immersion Program. Is that something that they're interested in? Is it right for me? What is it? Um, so we, we've, that's taken various forms. We've had everybody in the library. We've had everyone in my classroom. And of course, the last couple of years, it's been virtual. So um, I just have a little little Google slide that I put together this year um, to help with our presentation. Tracy usually starts it at our school and talks about the program in general from K to 12, what it looks like in Portage La Prairie, and then also reflects on how it's impacted her and her life and, and the positives there. 
And when she turns it over to me, I usually just talk about what, what is it like in kindergarten. It's the parents that are, you know, a little nervous about what should I be doing with my child, is this for me, that we introduce this, uh, this program to them. So we start by just letting them get to know me a little bit, talk about who I am and where I've been teaching and what my history is, and then I show them my family and my dog and tell them uh, where I've taught and what I do, just so they get to know who is this lady that my kid might be spending seven hours a day with every other day. So we do a little intro to uh, who I am. You can go to the next, next one. Yeah. yeah. I just stuck a little picture uh, of the kids in my classroom in action so they know that it's a real life place again and uh, this one had them all doing yoga during an indoor recess so I thought you couldn't see any faces so it would be a cute one to share just so parents can get a little peek into our classroom. Um, and then we start talking about the program. Pam, you can get the next yep. one too. So what uh, I sort of address with the parents are their biggest fears or the questions that I've heard the most over the last 16 years. And usually it's, well, we don't speak French, so I don't know if this program is for me or our family. So we just try to reassure them that actually um, this program works for all families, um, including EAL families, which we see a lot of now. It's designed, the French immersion is not designed for French families, it's actually designed for families that are non-French speaking. It's designed for families to learn French as a second language. So we talk about um, the fact that everybody's welcome and I give them examples of, of the last couple of years when I've had a little guy, for example, from Germany who did not speak English or French. So in the classroom, his classmates did a great job of you know, teaching him English during play, and he was learning French from me, and I was learning German from him, and then uh, the same things happened with a little girl from China, and a couple little girls last year from Ukraine, and the Philippines, and India, and so it really is open to everybody, and we uh, encourage them to keep speaking their own language at home, whatever that may be, not to give that up. The more languages, the better is what we kind of push, but yes, there's uh, no one we're not happy to have. So then families want to know, well, I have friends in the English program and they said their child can read by the end of kindergarten and, and how do they compare these two programs? So I just usually tell them it's like comparing apples to oranges, right? It's all fruit, uh, but there are little differences. So the things that are similar in the two programs is our curricula, right? The math, science, social studies, art, health, visit, our social skills. Those are all um, things that are exactly the same and I just teach them in French and the English teacher teaches them in English. Uh, the major difference of course is that French language arts and English language arts. So in English language arts, kindergarten focuses on pre-writing and pre-reading skills, whereas French language arts we focus on listening and speaking skills. So we just try to immerse them in as many French words and phrases as we can so that, just like when their child was a little baby, right, they, they, you need, you talk, 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 talk to them even though they can't speak back uh, to you in, in, in language, but they could understand, or they do understand what you're saying long before they can respond. So that, that's sort of our job, just immerse them as much as we can. So parents say, well, what about the fact that there, are there no pre-writing and pre-reading at all? There certainly is, but our focus is mainly on the language, on the oral language. Uh, and then, and this was my husband's biggest fear, so I always remember this one, and parents ask, don't they fall behind? Isn't there a lag if you're not teaching them formally reading and writing in kindergarten? So we just go through the program and explain, well, in kindergarten, obviously, it's focused on the oral language, yes. Uh, so there could be a tiny bit of a lag, but that's okay. It's built into the program. In grade one, formal reading and writing actually begins, like a dedicated lessons to that. In grade two, of course, it continues, but that they also introduce formal reading and writing in French. And by the end of grade four and five, French immersion students are reading as well as or better than their counterparts in the English program. And that's based on research, not just what we've seen at school. So we like to reassure them that um, not every kid even has that leg, but if they do, not to fear. 
How does it happen, they may wonder, you may wonder, I sometimes wonder, uh, almost magically. Uh, I use a lot of themes in the classroom because the more repetition that they have, the more familiar the vocabulary becomes a habit. Um, if our art is about trees and our science is about trees and our songs are about trees and our word of the day is about trees, they're going to learn the vocabulary for trees a lot quicker. Uh, lots of visuals, pictures, drawings, objects, gestures, acting, and uh, not the best, uh, I'm sure to the demise of my uh, colleagues down the hall, we sing a lot. I am not my husband, if you know my husband, I <laughs> do not sing well, but five-year-olds don't seem to mind. We have songs for everything, to line up, to wash our hands, to sit down, to stand up, to every part of our day we have a song, and they love it. That's the one part I hear from parents the most, is they, they say, we're sitting around the supper table, and they're singing these songs to me that they've learned in school, and all I'm going to say, so that's how it comes about. Um, their next question is, well, how can I help my child if I can't speak French? It's the same message in French immersion as it is in English. Read, 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 read. They're their child's really only English reading teacher uh, in kindergarten French immersion, but also their best, and, and uh, it would help any child. So that's, that's what we encourage them to do. If they speak Chinese or German or Ukrainian, read in that language too. Any kind of reading helps. Um, then they'd like to know how their child's doing. Unlike uh, Francais programs in French immersion, all the communication goes home in English. We make sure they know that. And then I also just reassure them that I will communicate with uh, emails, notes, talking to them on the phone, whatever they like. I have the Remind app that we use all the time, uh, for, which helped today a lot when it was a quick let them know what's happening. Uh, report cards, I tell them about report cards and the fact that they can come in or virtually do conferences and they have portfolios of the students' work that they get to keep at the end of the year. Um, but again, all that is in English. The child's work might come home in French, but if the parents need to do something with it, then some English will be on it for the parents. And then we uh, let them know that there are decisions to be made and we understand it. They need to consider what's best for their child. Do they need that little extra challenge of a second language? Um, do they have, not speech, speech doesn't affect, but language issues. They might need to think of it. Language is hard for your child to, to learn, then you might need to consider that. And then we just open the floor for questions and remind them about our registration days. So um, that's how we've been helping some families get to know what we're all about. And, answer any questions. Did you need to add anything, Tracy? You might have to turn Can everybody hear me? I think so. Yep, yeah. Okay. yeah, I just think the big thing that we need to do um, in informing parents is making sure that they understand it's a big decision. It's not a light, quick decision and then we can do a quick swap halfway through the year. So we really want them to have it well thought out. Um, and it's and it's an adult's decision for quite some time. Sometimes they'll put it back on their kid who's six or seven and say, well, they want to come out. So we really want to reinforce that that's, you know, the parent's decision. Um, and, and then you really think it through and, and have your, your strong ideas and supports uh, in place um, when forming that opinion. I think um, our job is to remain neutral. Um, I... Uh, I am a mom who's had three, um, all three of my children taught by Laura Hordowski, so it's uh, hard to remain neutral. Um, but we remain neutral and we let the parents make that decision. That's really, really, really important. Um, and we talk to them about if you need to switch um, in the program, that we would have a meeting, we would want to sit down and talk to you about that decision. Um, and that wouldn't be a quick switcheroo mi midway through the year. And if you're not living within the catchment area, we would we would request that you go to your catchment area school. So sometimes I think that you know sometimes it, they people people feel it's a permanent placement in our school. So uh, we have to really make sure that we do a lot of education around that. We educate the parents that we will provide supports. And this is something I think that we really need to continue to work strongly on, that there is resource support for students who are struggling in French immersion. Just because you're struggling does not mean that you should move out. In fact, I think kids who struggle, it's just a, another tool in their toolkit. And 
research indicates that if they're going to struggle in French immersion, they're likely going to struggle in English unless it's a diagnosed language learning disability. So I think that's really, really important that we um, we explain that and we we enforce and, and reinsure, reassure those parents that resource reading recovery is available to French immersion students. Guidance and counseling also available to French immersion students. And I think the one thing that I think we need to work on is to continue to reinforce um, their decision so that they made a decision and that, you know, three years down the road or when they go over to, to Arthemian or they switch over to, to PCI, it's something that needs to be well thought through if they're coming out of that program. There's social implications, um, huge implications when we make a switch. And uh, we don't want to label a child that they're not strong enough for the program. This program is inclusive to all children. Uh, regardless of ability. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to say that I was in the very first class of French immersion in Port in 1980. It's uh, brought me so many blessings in my life. Um, we've come full circle with it. Um, I think uh, it's provided many uh, opportunities for me um, and my children. My daughter went on a France exchange um, in her grade 11 year and that's just been wonderful. And, and my trips to Europe and, and Quebec and Montreal. I'm so glad the board has supported those trips. Those were phenomenal for the students, the staff involved. Uh, the relationships I form, formed with my students were amazing. So I thank you for supporting that. And finally, I just wanted to note, uh, Laura is a phenomenal teacher. Uh, she has a huge impact on the program and the way our, our school runs and the, the strength of the French Immersion Program. She's so strong, in fact, that I nominated her along with uh, some of our team for the Prime Minister's Award of Excellence. And I'm just wanting to make sure that you know that she's been nominated um, and our fingers are crossed that she received that award. So thank you for your time tonight. And we just wanted to make sure that you were informed on how we inform parents about French immersion in Port Prairie School Division. Thank you. How is the ankle? <laughs> Are you still well, I wish I was able to see my surgeon, but of course that got put off. So I believe the ankle is improving significantly and I'll be able to walk next week. That's what I think. <laughs> 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 Always the optimist, Tracy. <laughs> Always the optimist. <laughs> yeah. Thank you both very much for the presentation, oh, Laura. It, it was great. And uh, Tracy, thanks thank for you. taking some time. Mm -hmm. well, so, great. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah, that's what happens. Okay. That's what happens. Thanks well, a lot. Thanks, yeah. yes. thank Take you. care, everybody, tonight. And you as well. Yes. Take care. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything. Thank you for coming. This one's going yeah. down. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so oh, I was right. pregnant with both of my kids while I worked at Victoria's School. Oh, wow. Had nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hi, Laura. <laughs> 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 no, just leave it alone. Okay. Are you saying any closing comments? Already? No. We're good. Around midnight or when it starts.